In today's video, I make a road from gravel, create a rough texture with a limestone, I use dry flowers and paint some flowers red, I make an ancient Roman aqueduct from scratch, and I cannot forget add figures. Hello fellow modelers, I was on holiday in Rome a few years ago. I have an idea since about diorama with Roman ruins. I think it will be fun to create some ruins of an aqueduct. Also, I made a lovely British Churchill tank from Italy Operation 1944, so it will be cool to make a Churchill tank passing under the aqueduct. And the crew tries not to crash into it. It is important to find some blueprints, or at least photos. I have a nice pictures of the aqueduct from the Assassin's Creed. I know, it is a game but it looks historically accurate compared to a book about late Roman architecture. I recently bought interesting crafting material. It looks like ordinary floral foam, but the advantage is that you can buy thin plates of different thicknesses. The material is nicely soft, and I can easily draw new textures with a hobby blade. I rescaled the image to 72 scale, therefore I can transfer the size of the stones and pillars. For example, now I'm drawing guidelines for stone size. I cannot apply too much pressure or make deep cut, because the foam is relatively fragile and it can easily crack. The material is orange and so far it looks like a bricks, but do not worry, stones are not standardized, so I'm making them different. If you saw my previous dioramas, you already know that I made cobblestone textures with uh, extruded polystyrene. It was a good material, but this one is better. I draw basic stone structure mesh, but we need them more pronounced and texture rougher. I am carefully making lines deeper. You can use blunt objects because the lines are already done and the material will collapse in pressure. Anyway, the surface looks very flat and new, therefore I am making texture rougher and surface more weathered with ordinary limestone. Simply hit foam with a stone and the texture will copy. It was actually the most amusing part of the whole build. You are destroying something and in the end it looks even better. Who can like it? The dust from foam filled gaps, but you can easily blow them out with a compressed air. The result is impressive and this is only a small 72 scale. You can make weathering even more pronounced with more pressure to a stone. The first block of the first pillar is done, now seven more. I glue foam with a PVA glue, but you can use super glue as well. I need split foam to thinner diameter. I use it for this purpose razor saw. The top section of the aqueduct is more complicated than pillars, but nothing horrible. I made a relatively symmetrical arch, so draw stones is again the same as on pillars. You can use sliding scale as a template for curves.
I want the top section destroyed, so I am removing material on the edges. I found it better to glue the foam with a super glue. It is primarily faster. It has some shape, finally. It remains to fill the center with a small bricks and make destroyed top. Ok, now the base. I use extruded polystyrene. The ground will be almost flat, but it is better to make at least some shapes. It will look more realistic and interesting. I use for frame light balsa wood. Do not glue it directly on the polystyrene, but instead make the frame first. Also do not use PVA glue, because it contains a lot of water and balsa could bend. Instead you can use gel super glue. The small squares will hold the shape and are guiding stands for polystyrene. If you make the frame separately, you can comfortably control the right angles. The ground nicely fits in. The polystyrene ground is only base for soft ground layer. You will need water, sawdust and plaster. In addition you can add dry pigments. Mix all ingredients properly together and apply it on the base. The drying time depends on how much water you added and room temperature. But usually after 6 hours you can continue. When the mix is dry, remove the residual wooden frame. Simply align it with the ground. I want in the middle of a diorama road, so how to make it? I purchased different types of gravel for railroad models. And the rest is simple. Apply PVA glue on the ground and pour gravel and sand on it. Make it inconsistent, so try to add different sizes and types. The soft sand is from a local forest, but you can buy it also. The road is done, but gravel is not fixed. If you turn the base around, gravel will fall and you can start again. Therefore I mix PVA glue and water and pour it into the old perfume bottle with a spray. The diluted PVA glue will nicely fix all together. The second step is vegetation. Apply PVA glue on the ground again. I have in the stash a few types of static grass. And guess what, this material is again for railroad models. You can use static grass applicator, but the cheaper is Noch applicator with the holes. If you want to make it yourself, you can use a plastic bottle of a ketchup. The grass is nice, but I like vegetation diversity.
The bushes of the white flowers are nice, but I have a few pictures from the Italian war, and you can see many wild poppy flowers which are red. Therefore, I am repainting the most of the flowers with a red acrylic color. Still, I didn't paint the aquaduct, but I have a reason for that. I'm not capable of painting some structures separately if I don't know about the terrain around. So I mostly choose colors compared to the grass and road. I simply need to achieve color balance. I'm spraying the foam with a black primer. The black is suitable for all structures. And now I'm painting stones with a light gray acrylic color. The good trick is to paint some stones with more layers. You will optically make it less uniform. The gaps between stones are too large and probably pronounced. You can use some acrylic party, but I prefer soft sand, primarily for these Asian buildings. And what with this? I must fix the sand with a diluted PVA glue and let it dry properly. The result is splendid, primarily if you compare it before and after. I can hardly believe that it is not stone and under is some orange crafting foam. The last step is weathering with uh, dry pigments. You can use it as it is, but on the diorama this grey shade is too distinctive. Therefore I am applying more European brown color. The structure is 2000 years old, therefore I can apply some grass and bushes on the top. You can see how some modern buildings roofs are overgrown. So why not this Asian aquaduct? You can see now that the more brownish shade fits quite well with the rest of the model. So more vegetation. I have from model scene with nice fine bushes. If you are making small models like me, then the whole pack will last forever. Suppose you do not have a fine bushes, you can instead use natural dry moss, grass or flowers. You can find many useful material in your local forest or fields.
Another trick is to use different static grass lengths. Simply make in your fingers small turfs and glue them with a PVA glue. And dry flowers. This is 3 years old dry yellow yarrow. And if you have a garden you can cultivate red, orange, white or pink. I must tell my parents that I need all of them, because it looks lovely. You have beautiful details almost for free. And more tours from Satigras. I purchased a few years ago for my King Tiger diorama this nice photo edge nameplate. It looks like I must make more diorama models. Here is another type of dry moss, so this is the last touch to vegetation diversity. The static grass protrudes edges, so good practice is to shorten it. Last but not least, I can't forget at small British figures of a recon team. I use figures from Zvezda. They are primarily for wargaming, but are very nice, so you can use them freely for your models. Only don't forget to remove mold lines. The painting is more or less straightforward. I am painting basic shading with an airbrush and the details in the end in the paintbrush. If you spray lighter color only from one direction, then color particles will paint only folds on clothes. This way you can do basic shading and it will help with the rest of the painting. I am painting details of acrylic Vallejo and Cidel paints, because they have a good coverage properties. This is the result. Ok, not really. The shading I do with the oil paints. Good is to unify the surface with a matte varnish first. I'm painting figures sporadically, so I'm not expert, but in 72 scale the result is not the worst, at least I think. I enjoyed this small diorama and learned new tricks again. I hope you too. Primarily I like that scratch build aqueduct looks like I imagined. Maybe even better. Therefore I have good news for you. You can expect more dioramas because I have more exciting ideas. And it is. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Here is a presentation of the finished model.